When you picture yourself moving to St. Petersburg, Florida, do you imagine yourself living in a neighborhood with historic streets, waterfront parks, and an incredible view of Tampa Bay? Or do you prefer a walkable downtown with everything you need within a short distance? Restaurants, shops, entertainment, the marina, museums, and a friendly, vibrant city. Well, in this video, I'll share my top five neighborhoods in St. Petersburg, Florida, along with the reasons why I think they would be a perfect fit for your ideal lifestyle. By the end of this video, you'll get a better understanding of each neighborhood, their location, and proximity to the beaches and the bay. My goal today is to share incredible things about each neighborhood and share things you can't find on Google. That way you can make the best decision for you when it comes to moving to St. Petersburg, Florida. If we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I make videos that are all things Tampa Bay, what it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. And a little over five years ago, my wife Kate and I sold almost everything we owned. We packed up our family of five, moved here to the greater Tampa Bay area, and have been loving it ever since. We're also licensed real estate agents, and we help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the greater Tampa Bay area. Today, we're gonna to get in the streets of these neighborhoods that we're talking about because quite often, I get to sit in the desk and take these videos and share them with you. And while those are helpful, getting in the streets, helping you guys understand what it looks like, feels like um, to live there, I think is extremely invaluable. So in today's video, we're gonna do just that. Now, the first neighborhood on our list is Old Northeast. And this neighborhood makes you feel like you're stepping back in time. It's incredible. The proximity to downtown St. Pete is incredible. It is literally in the Northeast. That's why they call it the Old Northeast. Now, it runs essentially from 5th Avenue North all the way up to 30th Avenue North and as far west as 4th Street North. It's located perfectly right on the bay and just north of downtown St. Pete, giving you a ton of accessibility. You could walk out your front door and walk right downtown. You could head over to Vinoy Park, which is one of my personal favorites, and check out the views of the St. Pete Pier here. You can go for a run, just hang out in a hammock, whatever it is that you want to do when it comes to just hanging out. Bring the kids down, go check out the tot lot, the playground there, or, you know, our kids swim at the North Shore Aquatic Center right there, which is awesome. It's a great place to go hang out. Now, in terms of shopping, you've got everything at your fingertips. You've got Whole Foods, Trade, Trader Joe's, Fresh Market, and Publix all within a few minutes of your front door, which is fantastic. You've got the Sunken Garden, so you can hang out. What a gem in St. Pete. It is one of those places that takes you back in time. You can see flamingos there. It's a really, really cool spot to go hang out. You've got restaurants like La Hacienda, which is absolutely incredible. Just to the north, you've got El Cap, so if you really like a delicious burger, you can get that there too. And of course, you can head downtown and, and take in everything it has to offer down there as well. Now, when it comes to housing, you've got a lot of different options, but what the old Northeast is really known for is its historic housing. You do have the option to get some modern homes as well, but this place is really known for its Spanish style homes, its craftsman style bungalows, and the colonial style houses that are there as well. You've got historic cobblestone streets. I mean, this place just gives you all the feels. It's incredible. Now, if you wanna buy a house here, this is where things are gonna change a little bit because I will say this, it's not going to be cheap. Over the last 30 days, the average home that sold in Old Northeast was a three bedroom, three bath, 2,360 square foot home, and it sold for just over $2 million. Wow. <laughs> now that's not every home that sold there. You could have picked up something for as low as $632,000 and spent as much as $3,475,000 as well. There are condos in Old Northeast, and over the last 30 days, the average one of those that sold was a one bedroom, one bath, 1,467 square foot, and those sold for just shy of $1.1 million. On the low end, someone picked one up for $295,000, and the highest sale in the last 30 days for condos was just over $2.5 million. While the Old Northeast is not the most affordable on today's list, it does have absolutely the best conveniences and the proximity to downtown St. Pete. Number two on our list is downtown St. Pete, and this place is awesome. If you're into, you know, 
the busy active lifestyle if you want something going on you know a majority of the time but not overwhelming downtown st pete is a great place to call home now it's not for everyone and what i mean by that is you know this is a lot of condo style living there are very few single family homes available and it's a different type of lifestyle not everybody wants to live in a condo um, some people don't like having neighbors you know on each wall or above them or below them and that is the type of lifestyle you're going to find here but on the other side of that it comes with an incredible walkable lifestyle if you worked remote you would never have to own a car you could ride a bike you could <laughs> take a scooter you can walk you can run you can you know uber whatever you need you would not have to own a vehicle and that is fantastic now there is public parking it makes it convenient um, i like our public parking i don't have too difficult of time ever parking in downtown st pete and i don't know that you would either a lot of these buildings and condo buildings they have their own parking structure so obviously that gives you accessibility uh, to have easy parking and availability but man the shops the restaurants the boutiques the bars the bay straub park dolly museum M mahaffey theater like there is so many things to do you can go down to a rowdy's game you can go over to the rays game you can go to all the incredible breweries we have downtown and shopping is everywhere whole foods Publix, you know everything is within a short short bike ride drive or walk it's incredible st pete is a whole vibe that you have to go experience yourself before making a decision now it's not the cheapest thing in the world so keep that in mind <laughs> and we're going to talk some of those numbers here in a minute but in terms of active lifestyle it is second to none in the Bay Area you're gonna love it and this is one of the major reasons people love living here I mean if you look behind me right now you've got the Bay out here you've got the marina the Vinoy hotels right at the corner we're on Beach Drive in Straub Park you know restaurants bars boutiques everything you need is right at your fingertips people out running walking their dogs just enjoying the outdoors because let's be real Florida is meant to be lived outdoors and St. Pete takes that to the next level. If you love an active lifestyle, if you love entertainment but not overwhelm, St. Pete is your vibe and you gotta check it out. Now talking about the condos and what it's gonna cost you to buy a place here, over the last 30 days, the average condo that sold was a two bedroom, two bath, 1600 square foot, and it sold for just shy of $1.1 million. Now the range is crazy. Someone picked up a condo in St. Pete for $160,000, which is unheard of. And the highest sale in the last 30 days was $3.6 million. Next on our list is Snell Isle, and this neighborhood is very unique. As a matter of fact, I would call it exclusive. Now we're gonna head back up northeast of Old Northeast, and you'll see where this is. It's a peninsula. You come over the bridge here, and this neighborhood is stunning. As I drove over to come check this neighborhood out, because um, it's been a couple minutes since I had been there, um, there were uh, paddle boarders coming under the bridge. The day was beautiful. There are boats everywhere, and these homes are gorgeous, stunning. Now, some Something to be aware of in this neighborhood is exclusive it is is and as beautiful as it is it also is prone to flooding so keep that in mind does everything flood no um, but is it prone to flooding yes and it is one of those territories where you need to be mindful but if you're looking for the type of lifestyle where you can literally put a boat in your backyard have access to the bay this is where you're going to look big beautiful homes Spanish style modern homes it's an incredible neighborhood it gives you access to a lot of those amenities we spoke to earlier in the old Northeast which was you know um, Whole Foods and Publix and Trader Joe's you've got everything you need right at your fingertips but this is a more suburban style living and as a matter of fact it's Bay style living at its best if you're looking for that type of I want to walk out of my back door hang out in the pool just overlook the Bay or go out on the boat launch the kayak or paddleboard from your backyard this is the spot to do it it does not disappoint it is absolutely stunning y'all come check this neighborhood out now when it comes to buying a home in this neighborhood affordability is not necessarily going to be anyone's priority over the last 30 days the average home that sold here was a three bedroom three bath 2800 square foot home that sold for just over 2.6 million dollars during that same time period, someone picked a house up for $925,000 and the highest sale was $4.35 million. So as you can see, not an inexpensive place to live, 
Exclusive is the term that I would use, but this is an entirely different type of lifestyle. Again, most of the people that live here do it because they love the address, they love the location, and they really wanna be directly on the bay. Now, I know what you're thinking, Juan, when are we gonna to get to the neighborhoods that the average person can afford? And we're about to head that direction now. And let me just share with you, just because something is not as expensive as these exclusive types of real estate doesn't mean it can't be great. And historic Kenwood is the neighborhood that I absolutely love love and in terms of accessibility this is where you know the average person can afford to grab a property now I love this neighborhood for a lot of different reasons. It's um, you know adjacent to the Edge District, which is one of our favorite places to go hang out. Um, when Kate and I go on a date night, we've discussed this before, but we go to downtown Tampa and we go to downtown St. Pete. Those are really our favorite areas to go. We live on the beaches, so we don't have to go to them. But one of the things we love about this area is you know it's just got that vibe to it. There are people walking around, enjoying life. You've got bars, restaurants, boutiques like we talked about. It's right off of Central Avenue and historic. Um, uh, Kenwood is just north of that. It's an it's an uh, adjacent neighborhood to the the Edge District there, and in that district, one of our favorite places to go is Casitas Taqueria. If you love tacos, I'm telling you right now, this place is a hidden gem. If you're local, you know all about it. But if you're not from the Greater Tampa Bay area, you know a lot of the times you'll go to St. Petersburg and you go just hang out downtown. And the Edge District is literally on the edge of what you would consider downtown St. Pete. I know it's further west for everybody who's going to go crazy in the comments but for the average person who doesn't live here and doesn't understand the community it's still going to feel like it's part of downtown because to be honest with you guys there are almost 32 or 33 blocks of restaurants bars boutiques shops people living doing their thing right off of Central Avenue there and it's gonna feel like it's part of that now it doesn't have the high-rises doesn't have a lot of that going on but it still feels like it's part of the city and that's why the edge district is very unique you've got bandit coffee shop which is incredible that does not disappoint ever. And they're right in the middle of building brand new townhomes here as well. Some really nice areas that you can come check out. Now the neighborhoods are very similar in feel to how it feels when you live in Old Northeast. You know, you can, again, walk out your front door and be right in the Edge District or, you know, be within a few blocks. And this gives these neighborhoods a very quaint local feel. Architecture is gonna be similar to what you saw in Old Northeast. These homes won't be as large and you don't have access to as many Spanish style homes, but you still have that mix of old craftsman style bungalows in there. Really, really nice homes that are worth checking out, especially if you like that historic vibe. You'll find the cobblestone streets again, you'll find some paved streets as well, and you're right by uh, St. Petersburg High School. So it gives you some accessibility in that world too. Now the average home that sold over there, these are not large. This was a three bedroom, two bath, 1,273 square foot house. And they were selling for just over $591,000. Now someone was able to pick up a home for $400,000 during this time period and someone spent as much as $950,000 here as well. So this neighborhood is one of those areas where you have a pretty good range. What we typically see is that 450 to 650 price point is pretty common, but the homes are older. You're talking about 70 and 80 year old homes. You can find new modern homes there, but now you're gonna stretch up into the million, um, even $2 million for something that is high end luxury, a scrape and build property over there but you can still find something that is quote unquote affordable depending on who you are. Um, but let's be real, Pinellas County as a whole, that uh, Clearwater St. Pete area is not an inexpensive place to live. Right now at the time of this recording, the median sales price here is $485,000, which means the average is well over 500. So just keep that in mind. Um, this area is out of the flood zone. There are some properties that are gonna be in, some are gonna be out, keep that in mind, but insurance costs will be a little Lower, but when you start talking about homes that are historic, you definitely are gonna have higher insurance costs, so just keep that in mind too. This is really a lifestyle type of living here. Most people live in areas like the uh, Old Northeast or Historic Kenwood because that's the lifestyle they want. They wanna walk out their front door, walk right downtown, be in the mix as soon as possible, not have to drive everywhere to, to get to a lifestyle, um, very active and very communal, so just keep that in mind. And the last neighborhood on my list, but most certainly not the least, is Crescent Lake. Now this is a very tight knit community here. It's a little bit smaller, just north of the Uptown District, um, just north of downtown St. Pete, and it's just east of Old Northeast. So you're right there in that pocket. Again, accessibility to shops and restaurants, um, conveniences galore, walkability, 
Crescent Lake has its own park. There's a playground there. There's a coffee shop right across the street. And it's just one of those areas that gives you all the feels. I'm telling you, when it comes to St. Pete, the type of lifestyle that you can have all the way over to the beaches is incredible. But when you're talking about these proximity um, neighborhoods to the city, they're very, very hard to beat. You've got, you know, St. Anthony's Hospital, All Children's Hospital down there as well. You've got all the nightlife and shopping. You've got the Tropicana Field so you can go watch a race game. It's such a dog friendly city. And this is one of the things people ask all the time, but there are two bars right on Central Avenue or right off of Central Avenue that actually allow you to bring the dogs and come hang out. There's one called the Bark Bar and there's another one where they've got a pool where the dogs can go hang out. I mean, it's really, really cool. The vibe when it comes to living in downtown St. Pete and um, Crescent Lake is one of those areas too. Right off of 4th Street, gives you accessibility to right downtown. You know, it'd be a short bike ride or a short run to downtown St. Pete to take advantage of everything happening down there, but definitely worth taking a look at if you're interested in living St. Petersburg, Florida. Now, the average single family home that sold over the last 30 days was a three bedroom, two bath, 1,590 square foot home that sold for $818,000. Again, not inexpensive, but proximity is the key here. Now the range that homes sold in during that same time period were $505,000 on the low end all the way up to $1.25 million on the high end. Now, are those the only neighborhoods that are worth living in in St. Petersburg? The answer to that is absolutely not. These are just my top five. If I had to pack up my family and move away from the beach and move downtown, these are the areas that I would be targeting looking to pick up a property because I think they'd be an incredible place to raise my family. They're an incredible place to hang out if you're a young working professional or if you just wanna retire, these are areas worth taking a look at. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me and my team. All of my contact information is listed down below. There's even a link to my calendar. And as always, go out and live that Tampa life.